wholesaling. Is it legal? And can realtors and wholesalers work together? This is a question I get a lot, and we're going to address it today. We'll dig deep. We'll give a lot of opinions. Uh, Tony and I are brokers, not attorneys. So, you know, definitely check with your people, check with your state, and check with your broker. But we'll give you some opinions and some best practices that that we believe work. Uh, but it's a great topic. So let's get going on it. I'm Mike Ferrante with Century 21 Homestar based out of Solon slash Cleveland, Ohio. We are currently, Tony, the number one team for Century 21 in the U.S. in number of sales. So we're going to try to hold on to that title through the end of the year. Uh, if you, if you want to reach me, it's Mike at 21 Mike.com. And I've got Tony Geraci broker owner with some pretty impressive stats and numbers. Uh, but really Tony's a people person, not a numbers person. And, uh, if you want to talk real estate with Tony agents love to talk to Tony, because especially now with the, the market dipping from the last couple of years, a lot of agents are saying, Hey, place I'm at kind of is killing me with fees. Let's, let's see what other options are out there. So if you want to hit up Tony, it's 216 374 for 1269. That is the hotline. That is the bat phone to Homestar, right, Tony? Yes, it is. I, it's with me all of the time. I just yeah. try to turn it off, uh, at least the ringers off at, at night, but still doesn't. Sometimes I forget and I get those late night texts. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to get your one hour of sleep a night. And uh, exactly. speaking of texts, yeah, turn speaking off of text, my brain. Right, right. That's a great way to reach Tony. Just shoot him a text and definitely he'll get you on the schedule uh, to just talk real estate or talk about the brokerage. But anyway, let's dig into Tony because we get so many questions on this, right? Wholesaling is a kind of a sensitive topic. Um, you know, it, it's it's almost like a swear word. <laughs> you know, People say, you know, their eyes get big. Well, is that even legal? And um, so I, I thought maybe we would start off with a quick definition because I, I literally have agents say, Mike, you know, what is wholesaling? So Tony, do you want to take a stab at kind of explaining what wholesaling is for everybody? Really, it's uh, without try to take off my opinion off of this is basically finding uh, someone purchasing a home in contract, writing a contract for that home, and you're contractually owner of that property. So in, in, in legal terms, you have a contract agreed to on that property. So you are an, an owner by contract. And then that wholesaler is trying to resell and advertise that property to a new buyer in, 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 in hopes to assign that contract or sell that contract to the new buyer before it actually closes uh, in name. So then at closing, the original seller actually sells the property to the second buyer because the wholesale buyer sold or assigned the contract to them, usually for a fee. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good explanation. So the wholesaler is trying to make a profit by locking up the seller at a certain price, and then they shop that contract around at a higher price, and the difference is their profit. Now, one of the keys, and again, we're going to talk in generalities. Again, I had a guy in Florida say, hey, it varies state by state. Here in Florida, they're really cracking down because they're saying they're taking advantage of people and making more profit than they really should. It's unfair, uh, but we'll talk in generalities. They're selling a contract, and that is one of the key differences. So uh, realtors, real estate agents, we sell and rent properties. The sellers, the owners, give us permission through a listing agreement to market and sell their property. And that's why we're allowed to post addresses. We're allowed to take pictures and videos and open houses and all that. One of the key differences for wholesalers, and, and I know for a fact here in Ohio, Ohio is really strict about, hey, wholesalers, for now, you're allowed to do this, what you're doing, but you're selling a contract, not a property. So you're not supposed to advertise the address or post pictures of properties to the public. Isn't that right, Tony? That's that's one of the key differences. Exactly. And there's videos on, on the Division of Real Estate website. Uh, explains that you're supposed to be just advertising a contract, not a, a, uh, a address or pictures or anything like that. You're not selling a house, you're selling a contract. 
Yeah. And that, that I think is one of the key differences that as real estate agents, we need to understand when you start to have these conversations with wholesalers. Now I will get into what happens when a wholesaler calls you and says, Hey, I want to write an offer on this, this property. You know, it's really important that you first of all, first of all, that you know, you're dealing with a wholesaler and, and we'll dig into that here in a couple of minutes, but I want to kind of finish this conversation about the legality of it. Now, again, uh, we're talking about Ohio mainly, and you know, check with your state, check with your broker, check with your manager. We are brokers, we're not attorneys. Um, so we're giving some thoughts and opinions and a little bit of guidance just to get you started, to really dig into this, check with your local experts. Um, but that said, um, done correctly, it is legal. So we have a, a really great Facebook group with about 10,000 members and we hold wholesalers to the rules in our Facebook group. On other groups, I see wholesalers advertising properties, addresses, pictures all the time. And you know what? That's their choice if they want to do it. Uh, just any wholesalers watching this, just know that in Ohio, you're, you're breaking the rules. In our Cleveland, Ohio real estate homes for sale slash rent group, we, because we're uh, real estate agents, we kind of want everyone to adhere to the rules. So we will take down those posts from wholesalers advertising properties. Now, what they do instead is they might say, hey, I've got a three bedroom, two bath in this city with an after rehab value of 150. Uh, I'm selling it for 100. And they may give you an estimate of how much it is to rehab it. And there's all different ways that wholesalers will advertise their contracts. That's just an example. Um, so, so that's kind of big picture overview. Tony, anything else, big picture overview that we should talk about so people understand what wholesaling is? Yeah, no, that's that's a good picture right there. And I'm happy to go into this, you know, a little bit more specifics. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that because I think one of the biggest questions I get is, uh, you know, how can realtors possibly work with wholesalers? We do two completely different things. Um, I know one of the arguments against wholesaling is that, hey, aren't they really putting together a real estate transaction? And since they're not licensed in some cases, they're getting compensated for putting together a real estate transaction. That's one of the big debates. But because of that, many wholesalers will try to work through real estate agents. Now, again, I've said this a couple of times, check with your brokerage at Homestar our insurance, that's one of the biggest issues is, you know, find out if you're insured. We don't really work with wholesalers like that, writing offers for them because our insurance doesn't cover us for selling contracts. We're covered for selling real estate. Isn't that about, is that a good summary, Tony? Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, we always say, you know, stay in your lane, do what you're good at, but not only that, it's important that, you know, you want to, you want to work with clients and know that you're insured and they're insured. So at Homestar, we're not covered for that. So if you're going to work with wholesalers, first of all, make sure you have insurance coverage and that your brokerage allows it. But what happens when a buyer comes to you and then on their offer, they say, well, it's going to be um, Mike Ferrante LLC or a signs. Okay, that's a, that's an indicator that you might be working with a wholesaler, and really you need to dig into that as an agent. You really should understand who your client is, and that's for everybody, but especially in the wholesaling world. Now, if a wholesaler wants to write an offer with you, you should find out if they're really prepared to close on the property, because I think one of the biggest pitfalls with realtors writing offers for wholesalers is that they never really intend to close on the property if they can't assign that contract. And what happens is their 30 days, 45, 60 days, whatever it is, ends, and then they walk away. And of course, that is damaging potentially to the seller. And that's when tempers flare, issues arise, lawsuits happen. Go ahead and uh, elaborate on that, Tony. I, oh, I yeah, wanted, yeah, this is, I, I will say, I, I want to say 100%, but I'll say 99.99% uh, positive. It is 100 or 99.99% uh, illegal to write a contract with with the 100% intent that you're only going to close on it if you could sign it. I've, I've read through all of the things uh, for the division. I've watched lots of videos. No one, you know, you could debate left and right about advertising and things like that, but you can't go into contract and write, 
I'm only going to buy your property if I could assign it to somebody else. You have to have an end date. And if you don't find a new buyer, you have to close. But, and when I tell this to agents and uh, all many, 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 many conversations I've had with agents, they go, well, I've had this wholesaler and, and they do this all the time because I go, do, have you ever, do you speed on the freeway? Like, oh yeah. Do you, why do you do that? You just don't get caught. They just haven't gotten caught yet. <laughs> no one's caught them, but you're not supposed to do it. So that's a, a main thing there. So if you ever see one there, and then I'm sorry, I could go on forever, but I'll keep it, try to keep it short. As I, I want to say, everything I'm going to say is to keep agents safe. So I, I don't want to debate the legalities, but I will debate and tell you the liability that you possibly have civilly against buyers, sellers, wholesalers, if you are involved in these transactions. And I, I'll I'd be happy to give you a couple of examples when you're ready. I, I think that's a I think that's a great time to give a couple examples uh, because at the very end of this session, I'm going to talk to you and realtors about how there can be a good synergy with wholesalers. And, and I'm going to leave that teaser out there uh, because a lot of what we're telling you is cautionary or pre precautionary. There's there's one thing I'm going to share at the very end here about how we can actually work with them. And it's OK. So go oh, ahead, Tony. Yeah, this is an example. Like I, uh, I had an agent just a couple months ago say, hey, I got this. This person from Colorado is calling when to buy this house on sight unseen. And they sent me the contract and they were going to sign it. They're buying a house sight unseen and to try to find a new buyer. And now you're getting your seller as a listing. You're getting your seller involved with someone who's sight unseen that's out of the areas, already, already told you they're going to sign it to someone else. And then when they find that new buyer, you and the, the seller uh, don't have a right automatically uh, to talk to that new buyer. So your seller is selling a house to a buyer, end buyer, that you don't have any control over. They have no idea the, what the first buyer or wholesaler is telling the new buyer about the condition of the house, the things of the house. They've never even seen that. Is it legal to do? Technically, yes. But why? And that's why in our office, we have very, very strict policies, I'll say, on getting involved with wholesalers, because why would you want to be involved in that transaction? There's no such thing as as is. So many times, oh my gosh, if I had a nickel for every time I got in a conversation with an agent or buyer or seller, oh, it's sold as is. There's no such thing as as is, because we have lawsuits every year about as is properties. Right in the contract, agents get sued all the time. Everybody watching this knows agents got sued, companies get sued. Guess what? On our purchase agreements, it says right in there that you can't sue us because uh, you're not going by anything we said, and it has disclaimers that you try to protect us. They still do cost us time, money, in uh, aggravation, fighting a lawsuit because someone thought they were wronged. So that's what I wanted to explain why I feel so strongly about agents not getting involved in wholesaling or involved with a wholesaler because the liability, the seller, what, who's that wholesaler? What is he telling the seller? So if you have a buyer, sorry, I'll try to keep it short. I'm like, like I have agents like, I got a buyer that wants to buy a wholesale property. I go, okay, but what did that wholesaler talk? You're not talking to the original seller. They might've convinced the seller, well, we're buying, I had one agent like, oh, we're buying this house for almost crazy, like 135,000, it's worth it. And the, I, the wholesaler convinced these people it was worth 70,000 and they were taking on like a $75,000 or $70,000 assignment fee. They were making more money than anybody. And that legally could have happened. I said, why would you want to get involved in that? That if that seller finds out, like talks a friend or a relative and go, you just sold your house for 70 and it was worth 135, they're going to sue everybody. I yep. would. I, if someone came to me and go, Tony, some guy called me or girl, whoever called me and convinced me my house worth 70, sold it to someone else worth 135. And I go, why didn't you call a realtor? Why didn't you call us? Well, I, he told me that's what it was worth because you don't know what that wholesaler is telling that seller and you have a buyer. So those are two buy, buyer side, seller sides, why the liability is so high with these. Yes. And OK, so I want to uh, restate something that you said there. In a case where that margin is so huge, we as licensed real estate agents are held to a higher standard by the code of ethics. So if we allowed that seller to sell their property 
to the wholesaler for say 70 and then the wholesaler sells it for 135 how much money did the seller the original seller leave on the table and could we potentially be liable because that seller got screwed out of sixty thousand dollars put potentially the other two things uh, um i the, the word disclosure, okay, what is that wholesaler telling the end buyer about the property? That's where a lot of issues for realtors comes into play with disclosures, right? How many times, Tony, have we heard it? Well, the seller knew this and didn't tell me about it. They knew there was water in the basement. The problem with this is that we don't know what the wholesaler is disclosing to the end buyer. And that whole series of of events there, the conversations from the original seller, the realtor, the wholesaler to the end. It's like the telephone game, only no one's talking to each other. That end buyer might be upset at the end because they didn't get proper disclosures on the property. And the last thing, Tony, and I've heard you say this before, we're also putting our clients. So if it's my listing and this thing gets wholesaled and then sold to an end, end buyer, I'm asking my client, my seller, to do business with someone they don't ever get to talk to. And I don't know how well qualified that person is. This wholesaler is gonna just, they don't care how solid the deal is. They're gonna say, great, I can make 20, 30, 40 grand by wholesaling this property. How well do you think they really care to vet that end buyer? They don't, they don't, or they may not. I shouldn't say they don't because there are some wholesalers who do this correctly and do it well, uh, but that's, that's a big problem. Yeah. And if I could just throw in some red flags about wholesaling in general, it's number one, I've been in the business 30 years. This is not a new law. It's not a new thing. Someone figured out, it's kind of like, you know, in our political world now and our, you see, watch the news, some person or some state or some city is like, oh, this, there's this random law that's on the book it's from 1832 and we're sticking with that. That's how wholesaling came about, why we were hearing about it now. We've never, I've never even heard the term wholesaling other than a couple of years ago because someone just said, oh, let's coin this because we're allowed to sell a contract and figured out to cheat the system. That's number one. That's a red flag. Why wasn't this ever done before? Two, um, if you put a red dot on a map of all the wholesale properties in Ohio, it will, it will mimic uh lower income housing no one's wholesaling a million dollar house no one's wholesaling a five hundred thousand dollar house they're going into communities and this is my opinion i'm pleased you, you could quote me on this but tony's opinion they're they're going into communities into people that are not going to really be educated to the whole system and why they should get a realtor and sell their house or and and and, and check it out that's why they're just cold calling all these people cold calling communities uh and then last thing i'll say too is the reason why it hasn't come back and in my opinion is that years ago when we were there was the flipping going on there was people that got really hurt but well not really hurt financially hurt that had a lot of backing banks when people start foreclosing on their these flips that they did, the banks that put mortgages on these houses went after them, went to the government, said, let's go after these people. And it was the banks that pushed it. Now, unfortunately, because they're lower end properties, a lot of these wholesale deals are all cash. So there's no banks. So and these people are buying these wholesale properties and buyers cash or they're turning them into investors. Like, right, Mike, you just said, look at this great wholesale deal. And, and after you fix it up, it's this value after you fix it up, or you could rent it out for this. And here's the, they're selling houses, not for value. They're selling houses for in, investment opportunity. So they're turning houses, not into homes, they're turning houses into investments. And that's what they're selling. They're not selling the people on the price. Like, hey, you're buying this house for 130,000. Don't worry, but you could rent it out at this. So they're they're uh, just uh, really seeking have or putting havoc on values in certain areas because now whole areas, whole cities, whole neighborhoods are val the houses are sold on value of income, not what someone would live there for, and that could fluctuate a lot, and that's where uh, neighborhoods could get really get hurt. So I don't know. I'm sorry. Excellent. I'll get off my soapbox. No, excellent. I knew you'd have a lot to say about this. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to cover this topic today. Uh, one other red flag to look for, is, you know, so that look for the or assignee or or assigns. 
and also look for little or no earnest money. You know, that's the other thing is that a wholesaler who is only going to shop the contract with no intention of closing wants to put up little or no earnest money. So if you're on the listing side of things, or even if you're working with buyers, uh, one way to figure out if you're working with a wholesaler is to ask for earnest money. And one of the things we do for our sellers who we know don't want to get involved with wholesalers, which are all of them, because that's our broker policy, is we will, if we suspect it could be a wholesale deal from someone who is only looking to assign the contract, we will actually write on the contract, this contract may not be assigned. And then, of course, your wholesalers are going to say, well, I object to that because I may want to assign it. And then you can decide whether or not that is a, that person's a good fit to work with or not. So one other disclaimer here, I have friends who are wholesalers. In fact, uh, I have a friend who is a licensed real estate agent and a wholesaler. And I could tell you this, he he does it right. And I'm going to share a story with you uh, because this is I'm, I'm getting to the end here. And I want to share the story about how wholesalers can actually be good partners for real estate agents. So after all this stuff we said about all the warnings and liabilities, uh, I did say, promise you one instance where I would share a story where it might be good to know people. And in general, you know, it's great to know people in our business. You never know what happens for referrals and so forth. But here's my story. So uh, I'm not going to say names, but I have a wholesaler buddy who he has people making cold calls for him. He's looking for sellers who are interested in cash offers maybe a distressed seller, maybe a seller who doesn't want to go through the process of cleaning up their home and marketing it and showing things. Maybe they're ill. Maybe they just need fast cash. So there are instances where wholesalers can add value to a situation by helping someone who doesn't want to work with a realtor. So here's my story. Uh, my, my friend called an individual who said, eh, you're going to give me 40 for this little house in Cleveland. I don't know. Let me think about it. At which point he said, well, it sounds like maybe you want retail for your home. Let me refer you to my friend. And that was me. And so I went and met with these folks and I said, yeah, I think I could get you maybe 60 low sixties for your home. I followed up, didn't hear back from these folks. A couple of days later, that lady said, you know what? I'll take the 40 because I don't want the hassle. And she had all the information on the table. Everything was transparent. She knew she could get a little more, but she'd have to pay me. She'd have to have showings, have to you know get her house ready for showings. And she made the conscious choice to take the lower offer and deal with my, my wholesaler friend. So agents, wholesalers, you guys could work together because you each offer a different value proposition to sellers. And certainly if you have a wholesaler who says, look, here's a list of three people who didn't want my, my lower offer, my wholesale offer, and they're willing to give you those contacts, that could be a great source of re referrals for you. So how's that, Tony, making lemonade out of lemons? No, that is perfect. As long as everybody, you give people the option and they know all of their uh, things. So I, I honestly would not have, as, as from that story, really have a problem with a wholesaler that always had an age. Before I wholesale, buy a property on, you know, contract, I'm going to bring my realtor friend in so they can have a conversation with them, give them their opinion of value. And that is a, a beautiful example that, I mean, that's my opinion. I, I'd be totally fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it worked out well for everybody, except for me, I didn't get a listing, but Hey, it's, it's not about me. So three things I want to say in summary here in working with wholesalers if, if you have a deal with a wholesaler, I think it's really important to make sure everything gets disclosed, okay, both about the property and about where the money's going, okay, which leads me to the second key word, which is transparency. Uh, again, Tony's example earlier of a seller leaving a lot of money on the table and not knowing about it, finding out later, that's not transparent. And then the third one is we really didn't talk about title companies much here, but that's the other issue is that, you know, title companies also can have some intricacies, some idiosyncrasies about how they work with, with wholesalers because they may, not, they may not allow a contract to be assigned. Their insurance may not cover you. They may say, well, we're going to do a double closing and that's a whole additional conversation and maybe they can't do that. So definitely make sure you investigate, inform yourself, educate you and your clients about this topic before you get neck deep and get in trouble working with or doing wholesaling. That's what I have. That's great. Love the topic. Yeah. Thanks for your input, Tony. I, I knew you'd have a lot to say about it. And uh, I was looking forward to this. I know a lot of people are going to appreciate our uh, very, I think, objective overview of it. 
And if you guys have questions, you know, feel free to reach out to either Tony or me. And if you guys are watching this on Facebook, YouTube, you know, make sure you like and share and hit up Tony 216-374-1269 and me at Mike at 21mike.com. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, Tony. See you next week. Bye-bye.